so today we're here to talk to you about Egypt. Obviously, the very long title we got was Uncovering the Secrets of the Region's Media Hotbeds. Okay, so we took that and thought, okay, so what region are we talking about to start with? Um, obviously, it's the MENA region, Middle East, North Africa. 400 million people stretching all the way from Morocco in the west to the Gulf in the east. And then we thought, how can we talk about the Middle East and not talk about its biggest market, which is Egypt? The most awarded market, the biggest advertising market, and the market with 100 million people of population. Imagine what 100 million people can do for your business. Actually, imagine what a 10% of 100 million people can do for your business. If your product sold to 10% of the Egyptian population, that's roughly the size of Sweden, all of Sweden. Okay, so um, with sheer volume obviously comes chaos, unfortunately. And that's what we're here to talk about. So before we dwell into our story, has anyone worked in Egypt before with a show of hands? Okay, okay. Khaled, no? Okay. <laughs> Has anyone worked with Egypt then, like the Egyptian offices of your companies? Again, with a show of hands? Okay, great, I thought so. So what are the sentiments that you sort of share with, with Egypt? Let me take a guess. Um, we're late, most of the time. We don't stick to deadlines, no? The data is in the wrong format, or the data is wrong in itself. <laughs> so let me tell you why. That's what we're here to talk about. So. Doing everything in Egypt is actually very difficult. Every single step of the way is actually paved with fire, if you want to, if you want to call it that. So with that and with the difficulties that we face every day, and then we're going to take you through the details of that, everything becomes um, a challenge. Everything, every issue you face becomes a challenge onto how do you think you want to sort of get around this? You should always think of an alternative way, of a different way to do things. And that's why we th we'd like to think that chaos sort of feeds into our creativity, right? So to walk you through that, we'll just walk you through some of the examples of some of the work that Mondelez has done over the last couple of, uh, couple of months, let's say, let's say the past six months. We'll walk you through some of the challenges that currently are in Egypt, in case you don't know, and then how we've managed to sort of get around it. So Dina will be walking you through it. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, Ahmed, uh, for this insightful uh, introduction. Um, I'm going to be taking you through some of the challenges we are facing in Egypt, uh, just to give you an idea of how things are going now. Uh, but of course, we can't be talking about challenges in Egypt without starting with the first inevitable, cruel, as I would call it, uh, chaotic challenge, which is the economical downfall. So imagine waking up one day only to find out that the value of the money in your pocket is cut to half of what it was yesterday. This is the case with every Egyptian living in Egypt in 2017. I'd safely be speaking on behalf of every Egyptian living in Egypt when I say that we're all reconsidering the way we do things. Our expenses, our savings, our spends on luxury, and so on and so forth. After the flotation of the Egyptian pound decreasing its value to 50% versus foreign currency, we're all asking ourselves questions we've never had to ask before. We certainly cannot afford the same things. Just to put things a little into perspective for you, the same amount of money that used to buy a Mercedes C-Class up until the 3rd of November of 2016, today can only get you a Toyota Corolla. This obviously evoked an unpredictable evolution in consumers and their behavior. In a recent study, done in Egypt among Egyptian mothers, um, a, a certain Egyptian mother was asked about the types of trade-offs and compromises she used to make before and after the crisis. And she said previously she used to um, downgrade the types of brands she uses, like going from middle tier brands to lower tier brands, or uh, buying more in quantities versus qualities. Um, this very woman today can only afford to buy one egg per day to feed her four children. And I'm talking about an average middle-class 
slightly lower middle class Egyptian woman. Consumers aren't the only ones feeling the hit. Companies are as well massively affected. The cost of raw, importing raw material has doubled overnight because of the foreign currency situation. And they had to adjust to inflation by uh, increasing the salaries of their employees. And of course, prices of basic commodities like gas and electricity have doubled and tripled overnight, putting unforeseen expenses on companies that were not taken into account from the, from in the first place. This, in turn, had a domino effect on uh, marketing and the budgets we as agencies get from our clients. Again, as Ahmed called it, it's chaos. But that doesn't stop us. Let me tell you our reaction when Moro, a local chocolate brand by Mondelez, very close to our heart, was forced to cut its budget into half to what it was, and we really needed to connect with our consumers. We had this amazing opportunity with Al Ahli Club. For those who don't know, Al Ahli is the, not just Egypt's number one club, it's Egypt and Africa's number one club. It's crowned the, club, uh, the African club of the century. Uh, and we had this sponsorship opportunity, and honestly, we needed to make the best out of it without having to spend so much money, given our situation. As you can imagine, such a powerful club has uh, uh, sponsoring football players of such a powerful club comes with a very, very heavy price tag. And a club with 65 million fans obviously had no branding space left on its kit, except for the shorts, which were ours. They were Moro's. So we said, you know what? What is the best part of a football player? It's the legs. The legs that train, the legs that sweat, and most certainly the legs that bring the joy to the fans. So we said, let's sponsor that. We became the proud sponsors of only half a player of Al Ahli Club, AKA the Red Devils. We created these mischievous characters, insinuating some of the famous players and their moves and their acts without actually having to pay that amount of money to sponsor a full player. And this is how our campaign looked like. Can you play the video, please? Wusste die? Bolla! Schaufte die? Moro, Rai, Achdem, Schadin, Elchum. We then added another interesting layer by revealing their actual coach, Hossein El Badri. Uh, just to spark the conversation online. Can you play this video? Mm. <laughs> To be very honest, it's a very, very fresh campaign. It's only a three-week-old campaign, but we're actually very excited about uh, talking about it today and sharing it with you because we feel like, actually, consumers did get it. So far, in those only three weeks, we've reached around five million views, and the conversation was indeed sparked online. Some of the fans were actually starting to crack our strategy and comment, what, you did not have enough budget to sponsor the full player? Yes, that was exactly it. You guessed it right. Some other funny one said, uh, is, are you really sponsoring half a player or is my internet that slow? <laughs> Which is, again, a very common case in Egypt. Some other hardcore fans were doing exactly what we wanted them to do by starting to guess which players... Uh, this, this is, uh, they, they started to debate together by saying, this is X, this is Y. So this was exactly the point of our campaign. And it reached as far as some uh, non-Ahli fans, actually fans of other opposing clubs, were starting to show appreciation despite being non-fans themselves. So speaking of budget limitations, the second point I want to highlight is our resources for real-time and agile research were meanwhile, of course, lessening, creating a gap between consumers and the brands. 
Communicators in Egypt today had to get really creative in order to grasp their consumers and what they really need to hear from their brands. Yes, I'm talking about consumer insight. It's getting more difficult to get in Egypt nowadays. So let me tell you once again another story about uh, a very uh, Egypt's, we call it Egypt's favorite chocolate bar because it's one of the top sold chocolate bars in Egypt. It's called Mandolin. It was forced to quadruple in price overnight to a very, very price sensitive consumer at a very bad time. And honestly, we didn't know how to face them. We didn't know what to tell the consumer. So we got creative and we said, you know what, let's make it come from them. If there's one thing we know about Egyptian youth, it's their amazing sense of humor and their ability to turn anything in, into an internet joke. So we said, if they're that creative, why not take it to our benefit? With that, we created the biggest brainstorming session uh, constituted of one million people, our beloved fans, and we asked them a simple question. Why? Why do you think we're doing that? And the result was amazing. We got actually over 3,500 reasons why we had to get that expensive. And the best part is they all came directly from the consumer. So we picked the ones that went hand in hand the most with the brand's objectives and what we really wanted to highlight. And here's what we did with them. The video, please. طبعا انتوا مستغربين على ايه اللي مخرجني من الباب ده الحقيقه انا خرجت من الباب ده عشان ارد على سؤال حي الكل ليه مندولين عملت صباعين الحقيقه احنا ما نعرفش فقلنا نريح نفسنا وننزل بوست على الفيسبوك نعرف راي الناس ايه هو بالفعل جالنا اكتر من 3000 راي منهم راي بيقول انتوا عملتوا صباعين لانكم بتقلدوا حد احنا ما بنقلدش حد عارفين ليه لاننا ما عندناش مصنع شمال ها فطبعا ما سلمناش اللي عندها نظريه المؤامره عشان بعد فتره تشيلوا مندولين الصباع الواحد من السوق ويبقى السعر الرسمي ليها 2 جنيه وبعد كده تقعدوا تصغروا في حجم كل صباع شويه وكده كده الفرق مش هيبان يعني قوي ما هو الاثنين اصلا مع بعض وبعدين ننزل بمندولين الاربع طوابع واهو الشعب هيستمتع بمندولين والشركه طبعا هتستمتع بفلوس الشعب طب وليه ما نعمل سبع صوابع ونكسب اكتر <تصفيق> فاضيين احنا بقى لا يا ست اطمني لان الصباع الواحد مش هيتلغي بعد التشكيك والاتهامات اللي سمعناها دي الحقيقه كان في ناس سنسها عادي زي محمد الحضري اللي قال عشان انت وصاحبك انت وعم عبد البواب انت وصاحب الكش انت وعيل صغير انت وحد بيسالك على حاجه وحد بتساله على حاجه انت وحبيبتك انت وخطيبتك انت ومراتك انت ومامتك وعشان اكيد انت مش لوحدك مندولين عملت لك صباعين عشان تروق اللي معاك تروق اللي معاك ايه التخاريف دي يا محمد حضري ما كنت ماشي كويس يا اخي حصل خير ندخل بقى اللي بعده في بقى اللي بيشوف كل حاجه اتنين عشان كده عندنا ودنين وعدين ومناخير ده ليها فتحتين ورئتين وكليتين انا عملت لك سملتين يا خلاصي اشمعنا بقى من دولين ما تبقاش صباعين من الاخر كل واحد هيشوف سبب من دولين صباعين بمزاجه المهم تبقى مقتنع من جواك والفكره تميكس سنس وما تلاقوش اللي لوف في الصباعين واللي ملوش ما يلاقش الاثنين موجودين انت كمان تقدر تبعت على تويتر وفيسبوك على هاشتاج صباعين شرطه ليه ولو الفكره حلوه هنصورها مندولين ميكس سنس With that campaign, our product was sold out. And honestly, for us as communicators, recognition was the best part. We were featured on uh, the Mondelez uh, Global Marketing Committee as a best-in-class uh, best case study. 
We were featured among the top 10 advertising campaigns in last Ramadan in the Google Lantern Awards. And we were actually the only non-banking and non-telecommunication name on that list. So that gives us a prestigious indication of the weights of budgets we were compared to. So it was incredible for us. And uh, actually the best part about the Google Lantern Awards is that it's a jury-free decision. Uh, it's an automated algorithm that calculates the campaign effectiveness versus uh, budget spent on the campaign. So that was uh, beautiful. And last but not least, we were also awarded the best use of digital in the African Crystal uh, Awards. I leave you now with Ahmed to tell you about yet another challenging point we have in Egypt. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the videos. So a third challenge that we face is that we're too damn many. A hundred million people obviously cannot talk the same, walk the same, act the same. Obviously they don't consume the media the same either. That's why there are a million and one choices out there for the Egyptian consumer to tune into. We have more than 40, yes, you heard that right, four zero stations opening up, closing off every single day, which gives a plethora of choice for these consumers to sort of dig into, which makes the advertising seem quite ridiculous. For you to, to sort of tune into a one-hour show, if it's very popular, the clutter there is incredible that you might have a 60-minute ad break or a collection of ad breaks for 20 minutes of content, which makes it quite ridiculous actually for anyone who wants to tune into something proper, let alone that for our brands, for Mondelez, we're mainly talking to teenagers below the age of 18 who might not be e even watching TV. They might be mostly playing around with, with your mobile like a couple of the people here. Yes, you. Anyway, so uh, one last example we're going to leave you with is what we've done for one of our very, very dear um, brands, which is Chicklets. I'm sure you all are familiar with it. It's a gum brand. And that's what we did to sort of have our uh, um, teenage audience sort of tune in. Can you play this video, Throughout please? the past three years, Chicklets transformed from a grandma's gum to a brand that speaks to a wildly exposed younger generation of Egyptian teens. Chicklets achieved this by engaging with its target audience on digital platforms in a nonsensical, sarcastic comic tone. But you can't hold short attention span teens' interests for long, especially when they're on a never-ending quest to being different and original. And it was about time for Chicklets, a brand with strong heritage, to capitalize on its own originality in order to hold its position in the market. We took the original retro packaging design, turned its indistinct shape into a mouth, and then personalized each of the four gum flavors into a unique independent mouth character, appealing to the teens of today. Given teens' recent growing interest in instant online engagement, we decided to hijack this point of interest and be aggressively present providing something original. We chose Facebook Live to be our interactive medium using motion capture technology for the first time in the Middle East, assigning an internet celebrity or actor to each mouth character, turning their acting into live animation. We then fed this to a live post on the Chicklist page where the actors interacted with the audience on the spot, responding to their live comments and reactions. And so the first live animated show on Facebook was created, the Chicklist Weekly Live Nonsense. The mouth characters and its live show were announced through various absurd ads. <laughs> Through their small screens, teens had access to an entertaining, engaging platform where chit chats got rolling. In the end, now that it has a mouth, Chicklets can keep shouting its heart out. If the so called nonsense you do on the internet as a teen addresses your originality, then it's the most important kind of nonsense there is. Chicklets, nothingness is everything. Thank you. So, so this obviously took brand conversation to a whole new level. So you actually had people tune into their mobile phones, literally asking a piece of gum to sing, dance, uh, tell jokes. Actually, some people went to the extent of confessing their love to the pack of gum and asking the pack of gum to love them back, which was talk about brand love and your brand health metrics, which was quite fantastic. Again, this is a quite a recent campaign, just a couple of months old, but so far it's been quite awarded nicely. So last month in Lynx, we got a gold for design, silver for branded content, bronze for um, social media, best use of social media, and we're not stopping there. We're actually also taking it and traveling over the world with it. So 
what, what do we want to say? So these are three major challenges with three examples of how we managed to get around it. So with what we want to say basically is yes, it's challenging, yes, it's difficult, yes, it's horrible at times, but it's actually very, very exciting. It's very challenging. You go to the office every single morning and you don't know what kind of, excuse my French, shit you're going to run into and how sort of, what sort of creative solution you want to um, use to sort of get around that. So with that, I'll just leave you with one nice slide. And we want you to wait for us next time Egypt is on stage when we tell a story about how beauty came out of chaos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. Great insight into Egypt. We are running a bit behind schedule, so what we'll do is... I'm sure you two are going to be around over lunch, aren't you? It'll be great to get some more questions if you have any for the, uh, the Egyptian team here. Thank you very much, guys. Wonderful. Big round of applause. Thank you.